Good morning. This is Prophetess Grace Dalizu of Jesus Lives Ministries in Hallingham. I am happy to share with you during this session of Commanding Your Morning. And our topic of discussion today, children of God, is cheer up, the word of God works. Cheer up, the word of God works. You know, God is telling us to cheer up because his word is living and not dead. His word is living. It's sharper than a two-edged sword, able to divide asunder the soul and the spirit, the bone marrow and the joints, and is also a designer of the thoughts and intents of men. This we get in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4 and verse 12, where God is saying, cheer up, because my word works. My word is not dead. My word is not history. My word is not just stories or fiction stories, but rather my word is me. How do we know that his word is him? When we go to the book of John chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. Or the word was with God, and the word was God. That is to say that the word of God is God himself. And that's why we are being told to cheer up whenever we take the Bible, and we are reading the word of God, dividing the word of truth, we should be knowing that what we are doing, we are communing with God Almighty or the Trinity. In real sense, it's the Trinity. That is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And therefore, when God speaks to us, like he is speaking to us this morning and telling us to cheer up, I'm excited in my spirit because I know that every word of God that I've been reading, every scripture that I've been dividing, every precept that I've been looking, line upon line, it is God himself manifesting in my life. How do I know that? When we go to the book of John, chapter 1 and verse 14, the Bible says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. What is the Bible talking about? It is talking about Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ became flesh. You know, he's the word. Jesus Christ is the word. The Holy Spirit is the word. God Almighty is the word. But in chapter 1 and verse 14 of John, the Bible says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. I want to encourage you, child of God, that is listening to me. The word of God is not just rhetoric things that you are reading. It's not just uh, stories that you are reading about people. It's not fictions. It's not just history that you are reading, and therefore it will never repeat itself. I want to tell you that is the word of God. The word of God is living. The word of God, when it says to you, like it says in the book of Psalms 107 and verse 20, that and God sent his word and healed our sicknesses and reserved us or preserved us or separated us from destruction. God means exactly that, that you have no business entertaining sickness. The word has come to heal you. The word has been sent to separate you from destruction. And therefore, the word of God, in real sense, can cause us to cheer up. Because as we read it, what it says we are is what we are. Where it says we can go is where we'll go. What it says we have is what we have. There is no two way about it. Therefore, I want to encourage you, child of God, that that Bible you carry is not just an ordinary book. You may carry history books. You may carry books of uh, a motivation. You may carry books that people have written about themselves, autobiographies and whatever it is. But I want to tell you, the book that you call the Holy Bible is actually the word of God. It's actually God himself speaking to you. God can speak in many ways. I've had people tell me, prophetess, how can I hear God? I desire to hear God. I want to tell you, child of God, one of the surest way of hearing God is reading the word of God. Because in the word, everything you'll ever need, everything you desire, every answer you desire, everything, you know, every solution, every puzzle you need to solve as a Christian, you read the Bible and the answer is right there. Be it of health. Because the Bible says, like for example in health, the Bible says in Proverbs 4, 20, 22, that the word of God is medicine. In other words, mape, that is the Greek rendering, mape, means the word of God is medicine. You know, it is medicine. Mape means it is medicine. And it's able to heal you as you read the word of God. It doesn't matter what sickness was in your body. Whatever it is, if you do it with faith, 
you will begin to realize that you are improving day by day. You are getting energized day by day. You are being increased in areas of your business. You are being increased in areas of your finances. You are being increased in areas of knowledge. You know, the word of God is able to do all things. It can do anything because it is God himself. And there is nothing that is impossible with our daddy. And therefore, if he has manifested in the word, then as we take the word of God, we should know we are drinking milk, we are eating bread that is able to build us up and to give us in an inheritance among the saints. Glory to God. And therefore, you should never read it like logos. You know, when we say the word of God can be read as logos, it's reading like stories. You know, you just read and read through. But every time you take the Bible to read the word of God, let revelation come upon you. Let epignosis come upon you. May you be able to understand what you are reading. And may the Holy Ghost begin to teach you. Because one of the works of the Holy Ghost is to teach us all things. And therefore, I encourage you, child of God, just like I've told you that the topic of our message today is cheer up. The word of God liveth. The word of God works. The word of God is able to manifest in your life. Then you don't have to have a doubt when you take the Bible. Treasure that word. Read it in the morning. Read it in the noontime. Read it in the evening. You can read it as much as possible. When you are having your leave, you know you are not going to work. You can even read it for three hours. And you realize that you will never get bored. The more you read it, the more you become like Christ. The more you read it, it's like a mirror that changes you. You know, you can be able to see yourself the way God sees you. You'll not see yourself the way the world sees you. You'll not see the, yourself the way you yourself sees you. But you will be able to see yourself in the mirror of God because the word of God of necessity must change your life. When you want to look at the area of prosperity, the word of God has every solution about it. The Bible says that as long as the earth remains, that is in Genesis 8 and verse 22. That as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall never cease. So one thing that you know as a child of God, that God is able to give bread to the, to the eater and seed to the sower. The reason he gives seed to the sower is so that tomorrow you are able to have a harvest. Your harvest is assured as long as you are able to sow a seed. This is also found in the word of God. You'll find that as you sow the seed, God will continue to bless you. You'll begin to harvest. You'll begin to harvest. You may sow seed of your time in church, and God will ensure that your life is long. Because you sow time, you will receive time. If you sow seeds of support, of work of God, maybe even children home, even maybe your friend, maybe a child is going through an issue, and they don't have school fees, and you sow a seed and say, you know what, I'm paying school fees for my friend's child, or for my neighbor's child, or for somebody even you don't know, you'll find that you are sowing a seed whereby your children and your children's children and their children up to the fourth generation will never lack school fees. What am I saying to you? The word of God is able to touch on every area. When you go to the book of th third epistle of John and verse 2, it says, Beloved, I desire above all things that you prosper in every area, be in good health, even as your heart is at peace. So the area of health is handled in the word of God. The area of your peace is handled in the word of God. The area of prosperity is handled in the word of God. Sometimes you may be losing hope and wondering, what do I do? You have more worry than anything else. The Bible says you don't need to worry. In everything, make your request be known to God through prayer and supplication. And the peace of God that surpasses every human understanding shall become your portion. That again is in the word of God. You don't need to fret. You don't need to worry. God is also saying, when it comes to supply, if you are a giver, if you are a person that is in the kingdom and you have been supporting kingdom, then the book of Philippians 4, 19 tells you, and our God shall supply you according to his riches in glory. He will supply every need. It is also found in the book of Psalms 23 and verse 1, that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That is the word of God, child of God. We are sharing the word of God right from Genesis to Revelation. You'll find that the word is speaking to you. It is speaking to me. You cannot be otherwise with the word of God. You can only be successful. You can only be an overcomer. You can only be an, a, a conqueror. You can only walk in revelation. You can only walk in knowledge. You can only walk in understanding because the word of God becomes everything to everybody. You don't need to be 
scared of anything because there is a manual of life and that is the word of God and what it says about you it is what will happen where it says you will go is where you'll go where it says you should not go don't worry you don't need to worry yourself the manual says don't go there because if you go against the will of God as it is given in his manual then you'll be having problems and that's why I tell many people be desirous to read the word of God study to make yourself approved you know, as you read the word of God, you'll find that everything that you need to know, you will be finding it there. When we go to the book of Joshua, Joshua is the son of Nun that took over from Moses. There's something interesting that I want to tell you, child of God, in that particular area. When you go to the book of Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 8, God is very clear on him. Even as he encourages Joshua to be strong and courageous, there's something he's telling him meditate upon the book of the law meditate upon my law meditate upon my word that you may have a prosperous way that you may have success even as you are strong and courageous the only thing that will keep you doing well overcoming every battle overcoming every challenge overcoming every kind of temptation is only the word of god and God is not uh, ignorant of that. He tells Joshua, meditate upon my word. Meditate upon this law. Ruminate upon it. What is ruminating is what the cow does. Once it has eaten, it will chew hard again. That is to say, as you read the word of God, you need to ruminate upon it. You need to meditate upon it. You need to try and see what God is saying to you because God will speak to you through his word. It's the surest way that God can speak to a human being. So don't look at your Bible and think it is one book that you'll pick on a Sunday when you're going to church. Dust it. Maybe it has even gathered dust. Dust it so that you can go to church in order to fulfill every righteousness because everybody else is carrying the Bible. What you are carrying is very precious. It's very, it's great treasure for this life because that's where wisdom is. That's where his understanding is. That's where the manual of life is. That is where direction of life is. You don't need to fret. You don't need to worry when you have the word of God. Many times I'll open the word and God speaks to me, tells me, look at the prophet Ezekiel sometimes. And when you look at the prophet Ezekiel, for, a, for example, for those who think that they are not righteous and they are Christians, you know, the Bible says to us in the book of 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, it says, if anyone be in Christ, behold, he has become a new creation. This is in the New Testament. But before then, God spoke to us in the book of Ezekiel 37, verse 29, Verse 27 to 29, when you look at the book of Ezekiel, uh, chapter 36, let me just correct it. 36, from verse 27 to 29, there's something God is speaking to us. He's saying that he will remove, uh, uh, you know, he will put his spirit in us. He will put his spirit in us and cause us to walk in his statutes, cause us to walk in his ways. He will put his spirit in us. So when you get born again, Ezekiel has already prophesied about it, that when you get born again, your spirit is replaced with the spirit of, the whole, of God, which is the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says, he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. That is to say, the Holy Ghost that resides in us is all things to us. He's our standby, he's our energy, he's our teacher, he's our comforter, he's everything. But this was prophesied about in the word of God, in Ezekiel 36, verse 27 to 29. Why do I say that? Because God is telling us, children of God, that I will put my spirit in you. And once I put my spirit in you, you will be able to walk in my statutes without struggle. Salvation at ease. Salvation is not a struggle. You know, we are told yes to work our salvation with fear and trembling. But I want to tell you, child of God, it was already ordained by God for you to be uh, uh, saved, for you to be uh, walking in righteousness and holiness. Therefore, it's not a struggle. When God puts his spirit in you, you can only be as God. When we look at the Bible in the book of 1 John, chapter 4 and verse 17, the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so are we in this world. When you go to the first epistle of John again, Chapter 3 and verse 2, it says, now are we the sons of God. When you get born again, you become the son of God. We may be the sons of adoption because initially 
Christ was not coming for us. He was coming for the Jews. That's what the Bible tells me in the book of John chapter 1 and verse 11. He came to them that were his, but they rejected him. But the Bible says as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. He came to his own. They rejected him. Verse 12 says, but as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. I want to take you back to Ezekiel 36, verse 27 to 29. It blesses my soul that God has put his spirit in us. Therefore, we don't need to struggle. We'll walk in his statutes without fear, without struggling, without any kind of condemnation. And then he goes on to say, not only will he cause us to walk in his statutes, but he will also call for the corn and increase it. He will call for the corn. That is to say, God will also satisfy you. Satisfy you with food. Satisfy you with wealth. Satisfy you with riches. That salvation does not come just as one thing that you are born again, that you have received Christ, but it comes as a package. Health is within it. Prosperity is within it. Peace is within it. Destiny helpers are within it. Salvation comes as a package. I don't know whom I'm talking about, but the reason that I speak to you about this is because put it, God put it in my heart that I speak to you about his word in general, from Genesis to Revelation, that God has good things for you. When we go to the book of Genesis, chapter 1 and verse 28, first of all, let me start from 27. The Bible says that God created us in his Im image. That is to say, whatever we do, we do it as God. That's why he says to us in first epistle of John, chapter 4, 17, as he is, so are we. If he has dominion over this world, over the universe, then we have dominion. If he has, you know, the power to multiply, then we have the power to multiply. If he has the power to cause there to be peace, Jesus said, peace, be still. You know, peace over the oceans, over the seas. There was turmoil, but he said, peace and be still. We are able to do the same. We can have peace within us. We don't have turmoil. We don't have to have turmoil within us. We have peace because God has said it. When we look at the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, the Bible says we are created in his image. We were created in his image. When you go to verse 28, it says, and you are supposed to be fruitful, multiply, increase, and subdue all the universe, subdue every living creature. You are also supposed to have dominion. It is the word of God. You are asking, how come I don't have dominion wherever I am? God is speaking to you. When we skip and go to Joshua chapter 1 and verse 3, the Bible says, wherever the soles of your feet shall step, you shall possess. Let's move to the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, and verse 3. I'm talking about the word of God. It says, and I will bless you with every spiritual blessing from the heavens. I will bless you with every spiritual blessing. Everything that you see in the planet Earth begins in the spiritual realm, bad or good. But God is saying, I will bless you with every spiritual blessing. That is to say, God has every good plan for you. When we go to the book of Jeremiah 29, and verse 11, God says, I have a good plan for you to bring you to an expected end. I have good plans. It is you who is worrying yourself. But rather, I have everything planned out for you. All you need to do is walk in my statutes. And even these statutes, I'm giving my spirit to you. That's what he's saying in the book of Ezekiel 36, 27 to 29. I'm putting my spirit in you. You don't need to struggle. Once you become born again, there's nothing that like struggling again. Or everything you'll ever desire through the Spirit of God, you are able to access. God gives you the keys. God is able to give you the keys. When we look at the book of Matthew 16 and verse 19, the Bible says, and he has given us keys. Whatever we shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever we shall release on earth shall be released in heaven. Look at that. It is the word of God. It is the word of God. It is the word of God. Run with the word of God. Because in the word of God, there is every solution. When you go to the book of Isaiah 22, and verse 22, he says that he has put the keys on the shoulders of the righteous, of the children of God. We have the keys to open any door that we desire to open. When you go to the book of Revelation, I told you, everything from Genesis to Revelation is speaking to you, child of God. Read the word of God, divide the word of truth, and be able to walk in dominion, be able to walk in success and victory. You don't have to fret. If God is on your side, that's what the Bible says. 
in the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 31, if God is on your side, then you are a victorious person. 37, in the same chapter, chapter 8, 37 says you are more than a conqueror. You conquer everything, but you don't conquer on your own. You conquer because God is on your side. You conquer because God is doing it for you. You conquer because the word is in you. You know, if you chew the word of God and it is inside you, you realize you start ma manifesting in his power and in his glory. When you go to the book of Revelation, chapter 3, from verse 7 and 8, you realize that the keys of David were taken by Jesus Christ. And he says that whichever door he will open shall remain open. Whatever will close that would have afflicted you shall remain closed. He goes on to say that yes, you may be of little strength, but you have not denied his word, and therefore he will be with you. You may be of little strength. You may be of little strength, maybe even of little faith. But God says even if your faith is as little as, as a mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain and tell it to go yonder, and it shall go yonder. I want to tell you, child of God, cheer up. Because the word of God works. I have walked in salvation, not in a long time and for a long time, but I've seen God work in my life miracles. And it's through the word. Because as much as I'm able to hear him with my ears, but I'm also too able to read the word. And the more I read the word, the more it becomes clear. Any information or message he gives to me to pass to the children of God. Because God will never contradict himself. Whatever he says in his word, must be what he says even in the heavens when he's speaking to an individual. When you look at the book of Isaiah 55 as I wind up and verse 11, the Bible says that his word that proceeds from his mouth shall never return to him without ensuring what it was sent to do, it has done. He supervises his word. That's what the Bible says also to ensure that it comes to pass. You may have received the word of God or a prophecy from a prophet of God, from a pastor, from a teacher, from an evangelist, from an apostle, run with that word because that is an, a vessel and he has the mandate to speak the oracles of God to you. Run with it because God is not a man that he should lie. Whatever he has said about you must come to pass. He has said we are blessed and we remain blessed. Whoever he has blessed, he cannot add any sorrow to it. The Bible says it in the book of Proverbs 10, 22, that he blesses and adds no sorrow to it. His blessing maketh rich and adds no sorrow to it. And therefore, child of God, I want to tell you, you may have given up hope. Don't give up hope because the word of God is true. The word of God is living. Cheer up because the word of God is with you. He has sent that word to deliver you. He has sent that word to encourage you. He has sent that word to heal you. He has sent that word that you may prosper. When you look at the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, he says, I am the one who gives power to create wealth. Nobody can create wealth on their own. Even if they create on their own, it shall not be long-lasting. It shall never go to the fourth generation. But anything that comes from God is everlasting to everlasting. Child of God, I don't know what is in your mind right now. You may be saying, I've been trying the word of God, and I feel like it is not working. I've been reading and not understanding. I pray for you right now and declare that as you begin to read the word of God, may understanding come upon you. May the power of God be upon you. May you divide the word of truth and may the word become flesh in your life that whatever he has said, let it manifest. I also want to pray with those who are not born again. This message that I've given is not for those who are not born again. It is only for those who are born again because they have become a new species. They have become a new creation. And therefore, I want to speak to you who is not born again to tell you, child of God, you are still created by God. And because God desires your spirit and desires you as a person, then you must get born again to walk in this revelation of the word of God. And therefore, I will pray with you also. If you want to get born again, pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive my sins because I'm a sinner. Write my name in the book of life. With my heart, I believe unto righteousness. With my mouth, I make confession unto your lordship over my life. Child of God, if you have just prayed that prayer, you are born again. You don't need to fret. You don't need to be scared. Go to a church that is word teaching, a, a church that will grow you, ground you in the word of God, that will cause you to walk in the statutes of God. And once they do that, you'll be able also to win others and bring them to the kingdom. Because once God says, as he is, so are we, then it means if he's the word, we are also the word. 
We must be living epistles of God. Wherever we go, let's be a testimony of the goodness of God. I also want to pray to ask you, you can still come to Jesus Lives Church Ministries. We are based in Arlingham, behind Arlingham Plaza, and we'll be glad to receive you. I will be glad to be receive you and ground you in the word, teach you the things of God, the eternal verities, and be able, you, that you may be able also to be a voice to nations regarding the word of God. I also want to pray with somebody who is saying, Pastor, yes, I'm born again, but I've been discouraged. I've seen like salvation is not working. I feel like going back to Egypt, where there's watermelon, where there are garlics and the likes. I want to tell you, there's nothing as beautiful as salvation. Salvation comes as a package. It comes with long life. It comes with wealth. It comes with peace. It comes with prosperity. And at the end of the time, you'll be able to see your maker and eternally rejoice because everything on the world or in the world will pass away, but the heavens will never pass away. Your life will never pass away as long as you are born again. I want just to encourage you, child of God, do not backslide. If you are about to backslide or you had backslidden, pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, restore me to your goodness. Restore me to the kingdom that I may belong to the commonwealth of Israel, that I will no longer be an alien to the covenant of God. If you have just prayed that prayer, if you are backsliding, God has restored you. If you had already backslidden, don't worry. Seven times will the righteous fall, but seven times shall he be risen again. God bless you, and I pray that I will meet you again in this program of Commanding the Morning. Keep it KTN, and keep commanding your morning that you may see the glory of God in your life. God bless you. Bye-bye.